Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Welcome to our special public talk on the topic of how does a believer balance between fear and hope. Featuring, of course, the eminent scholar, Sheikh Ansim Al-Hakim. It is an honor to have w with us a distinguished scholar, which is, uh, of course, Sheikh Asim Al-Hakim. We sincerely thank you for gracing us, inshallah, with your wisdom, experience, and knowledge this morning. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيد الأولين والآخرين وإمام المتقين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته it is a pleasure for me, alhamdulillah, to be here in Perlis for the first time. I hope, not the last time, but we will happen and see, inshallah, depending on the results. No clapping, please. No takbir. Everything will be fine, inshallah. <laughs> so the topic is not a topic of, um, let's say, entertainment. It's a topic related to aqidah which is the most important thing in life, which most of us may not realize that what makes it or breaks it is your aqidah. This is what the messengers of Allah Azza wa Jal fought their people for. Not for wealth, not for property, not for piece of land, only for aqidah. And this is what people are fighting us for, for our beliefs. For our aqidah, and a huge part of our aqidah is al khawfu wal raja, the fear of Allah Azza wa Jalla and the hope in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And this is mentioned in the Quran in black and white clearly. Anyone who reads the Quran or claims to be a Muslim and contemplates about the Quran finds this clearly mentioned in the Quran, let alone the Sunnah. But the Quran is the thing that nobody disputes up, uh, upon, even the people of bid'ah. So what does Allah Azza wa Jal say about this topic? Allah describes the messengers and prophets of Allah by saying, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ يَحْيَى وَأَصْلَحْنَا لَهُ زَوْجَةِ 
إنهم كانوا يسارعون في الخيرات ويدعوننا رغبا ورهبا وكانوا لنا خاشعين So Allah says indeed these messengers and prophets of Allah they used to hasten to good deeds and supplicate us in hope and fear so this is how the messengers of Allah used to supplicate to Allah Azza wa Jal in hope but also in fear so in order to know how to balance between these two we have to understand what is meant by them so what is fear fear of Allah is to expect something bad to happen in general fear is when you expect something bad or to miss something that you love and want because there is speculation about it there is a sign that may direct to that uh, intuition and it is the trembling trembling of the heart and being unable to be steady and this is what fear usually means it's the opposite of to be secure so when you are secure you're safe you're not afraid when you're afraid you're not safe and the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal is the sign of believers it is the way those of knowledge have towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah mentioned إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ ha. الْعُلَمَاء Verily, only those among Allah's servants that fear Him most are the scholars. So Allah limited the actual knowledge in those who fear Him the most. And the fear of Allah is an indication of the purity of the heart. And the sincerity of the soul it has an importance great importance in Islam because it pushes people to doing good deeds and protecting them from sins it is one of the most important obligations in our religion because it has consequences when you have fear from Allah Azza wa Jal. Ibn al-Qayyim says the stage or manzila of fear is the highest and most important in Islam and it's the most beneficial to your heart. It is a fard upon every single individual and it was ordained and instructed in the Quran. Allah says, فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِي in kuntum mu'minin do not fear them and fear me if you are believers which means that a sign of you being a mu'min is that you fear Allah if you don't fear Allah you're not and Allah Azza wa Jal described the messengers of Allah as warners munthirin they warn you and when you are warned you're afraid they warn you from Allah so you fear Allah they warn you from the torment of hell so you fear hell they warn you from the day of judgment where you are accountable so you must be afraid and Allah Azza wa Jal complimented and praised the people of fear in the Quran Allah says Indeed, they who are apprehensive from fear of their Lord and they who believe in the signs of their Lord and they who do not associate anything with their Lord and they who give what they give while their hearts are fearful because they will be returning to their Lord. It is those who hasten to good deeds and they outstrip others therein. All these beautiful signs and descriptions of this ayah, Mother Aisha came to the Prophet and said, O Prophet of Allah, 
these people who are afraid and they do this and they, are they those who fornicate and steal and do sins? The Prophet said, no, O daughter of a siddiq They are those who fast, pray, and give charity, but they are afraid that Allah would not accept from them. It is those who hasten to good deeds and they outstrip others therein. These ayahs describe those who are fearful, yet they do a lot of good deeds. Are we like that? Seriously. Do we do what they do and we're afraid? One of us may finish the Quran once every three, four years and feel, feel boastful about it and tell everybody about it. Maybe do a party and invite people. Subhanallah. Yet, when we make sins, we're not afraid. People go to Hajj and come back. They should be on the straight path. No, they keep on doing sins. They go for Umrah and come back and they indulge in sins. What are you doing? He said, I have credit. What do you mean? Well, I did good deeds. I did Hajj, Alhamdulillah. I did Umrah. I have credit. Yeah, this is not a mobile phone you top up. This, this is between you and Allah Azza wa Jal. You have to be fearful. You pray tahajjud before Fajr, five, ten minutes before Fajr. What do, do the righteous do? They pray two, three hours tahajjud. Just before Fajr, Adhan, by 10, 15 minutes, they ask Allah for forgiveness. For what? For our shortcomings. You just prayed three hours, tahajjud. Yes, you don't know if Allah is going to accept it. We do what we do and we boast. I'm a renowned scholar. <clears throat> I'm an international speaker. I'm, I have credit. I can do whatever I want. This is wrong. You should feel very small of yourself. You should feel that Allah will not accept your deeds. This would make you reach safety. But the moment you do something good, well, I gave 100 ringgits to a poor person. I feel good about it. Feeling good is not bad. Is it accepted? Of course it's accepted. I did it for Allah, Allah will accept it. No, yeah, now you have to be fearful that Allah may not accept it. And this is the difference between righteous people and hypocrites. Al-Hasan al-Basri says, they, that is the righteous people, did good deeds and did their best in these good deeds while being afraid that Allah would reject it. The believer combines between good deeds and the fear of Allah, while the hypocrite combines between sins and being safe and secure from Allah's torment and punishment. This is how we are, un unfortunately, today. Fear that is genuine and praised is what prevents you from doing sin. This is what is Allah wanting from you, to have this fear that stops you. Why don't you pray Fajr in Masjid? The masjid is next door. Ah, uh, Sheikh, it's, the, the, the bed is cozy. The air condition is cold and mm, I feel good sleeping. You don't have fear? Then you, are, you have problems. Your fear takes you out of your bed to go and pray in the masjid. Your fear makes you turn off the music when it's playing in the car. Nobody's with me in the car. Why not dance and... and, and your fear makes you cancel your Netflix and Showtime subscription and all the haram thing. Because I fear Allah Azza wa Jal. I don't want to go to hell. This is the true genuine fear. And when you say genuine fear, does this mean that there are types of fears? Yes, there are types of fears. There is the mandatory fear. What is that? This is the fear that obligates you to do Man, uh, mandatory things and prevent you from falling in haram. You have this fear, you go to Jannah. That's cool. Yeah, this is the, minim, the bare minimum fear. Bare minimum? It prevents me from going to hell. Yes, but it is bare minimum because 
A better form of fear is the recommended fear. And what is that? It is the fear that makes you do more. Yes, you did the obligations. Did you pray the sunnah, 12 rak'ah? No, Allah made five prayers mandatory per day. Yeah, but the sunnah is a higher level. Hmm, I never knew that. It builds your house in Jannah. 12 rak'ahs a day, that's easy, I'll do it. Do you fast Mondays and Thursdays? Why would I do that? I fast every Ramadan. Yeah, but if you fast Mondays and Thursdays, Allah Azza wa Jal would look at your deeds every Monday and Thursday and approve it. And the Prophet Ali said about Monday, it's a day I was born in and it's a day I was revealed to in. So I love to fast it. Huh? Okay. So this fear gives you an edge. Okay, this is number two. Number three, the fear of the incompetent, the fear of the lazy ones. This is your fear and mine. What a fear is that? This is the fear we get when we listen to reminders. Reminders are like a whip. When someone flogs you, you feel the pain and you're hurting. After a day or two, the pain is gone and you forget. So you need another whip and a third and a tenth. These reminders, these gatherings we come to attend to soften our hearts and to know our religion more, these are whips. In them, we have this incompetent fear where we fear Allah Azza wa Jal, we feel remorseful and we may cry and we, we try our level best. And as, as soon as we go, light a cigarette and enjoy life. This fear is good because it's temporary and it might work. It might extend a little bit. Maybe sometimes it extends for a whole week. Khutbatul Jumu'ah is a beautiful occasion to attend every week. Some of us benefit the whole week. So it's like recharging. So you are fully charged the full week. And once the battery goes down before the red, you attend the following Jumu'ah and you recharge again. The fourth type of Fear is the prohibited fear. Oof, there is a prohibited fear? Yes, when you go overboard. This is the fear of al-khawarij. When you feel that Allah is not gonna forgive me. When you feel no matter what I do, Allah will put me in hell. This causes, and I do this in my counseling sessions. I have counseling sessions every day with people, of course paid, huh? not free. Let's things be clear. I don't waste half an hour of my time for free, except sometimes. But you, ha you want to sit with me for half an hour, you have to pay. So they come to me, Sheikh, I have this fear of Allah, and they speak, and they vent. But I don't let them vent for more than four minutes because t time has value, and I don't want to waste your time. I could listen for you for half an hour and say, look, Zakallah khair, get another session and pay me more. <laughs> what is the problem? Look how shaitan works. Shaitan comes to you from a very good door, the door of the fear of Allah. Who hates fearing Allah? It's a good door. But then he opens it to an extent you cannot close it. And what happens? He says to you, there is no hope for you. But I'm afraid of Allah. I say shahada 50 times a day. Why? I, I, someone said something, I smiled. So I committed shirk. Someone says something and I thought of the Prophet in a negative way. So I committed kufr. So he says shahada 50 times a day. He takes a shower five, five times, 10 times a day, ghusl, to embrace Islam. After two, three weeks, he gets despaired of Allah's mercy. Says, Allah is not gonna forgive me. Shaitan says, yes, Allah is not gonna forgive you. What to do? Leave salah. Wallahi, they come to me in the hundreds. They don't pray. They don't fast, they don't believe in Islam, but they cry like babies in, in the session. I don't want to go to hell. Don't cry, you are in hell. <laughs> this is called shock therapy. You smash them on the face and then smash them again in the face. They wake up, they need this by the way. So I said, you're in hell. I said, Sheikh, I don't, I said, you don't pray? I said, yes, I'm afraid of Allah. No, 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 you're not afraid of Allah. 
You are afraid of Allah, you pray. Today. Some of them are afraid of death. This is another negative fear. I had a brother from the Gulf. He came to me in a session. And we have time, huh? So, yeah, before lunch, no problem. So he came to me and, and he was terrified. He looked like a pale chicken. I don't know how a pale chicken looks, but yeah, you understand. So what's the problem? He said, I have this fear of death. Three years, I've been restless. My wife divorced me because of it. I lost my job. I lost half of my weight, Sheikh. And for the past four weeks, I cannot take a shower, ghusl, I do not pray. And I said, how long you've had this? He said, three years. And I said, did you die? The guy, Sheikh, of course not. He said, you stupid moron. Because, Why? He said, if you did not die in three years, what will happen in 15 years and you don't die? The guy said, hmm. You're going to live like this for 15 years? Is, and this is a sign of weak aqeedah. Come on, Sheikh, what, what does aqeedah have to do with this? If you know the six pillars of Iman, which the vast majority of Muslims you meet on the street, you talk to them and you say to them, what is the six pillars of Iman? It's <laughs> shahada, salat, zakat, so. No, you stupid. It's five. I'm talking about the six. He said, oh. New version, 2.1. said, no, 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 this is Iman and this is Islam. So you say to them, until you come to the Qadar. Do you believe in predestiny? He said, yes. Do you believe that you will die on a specific day? He said, yes. Can you be one minute early or one minute late? He said, no. He said, why are you afraid? Look at you. Three years, you've lost everything. If you had Iman, you would go and work. So this kind of iman, the fourth type, sorry, this type of fear, the fourth type of fear is the prohibited fear. Some people are so scared of things that move, a tree that moves. <gasps> I can't go there, Why? there is jinn, there is, yakhid, come on. This fear is very negative. It shows that you don't have iman. Sheikh, I don't want to get married. Why? I don't want to become pregnant. Not, not you, of course, the men. This is the guys. Yeah, some of the men are pregnant, mashallah. They're four months pregnant. Anyhow, let's go back to the topic. Excuse me. So they say, I, I get sisters like this. I don't want to get married. Why? Because if I'm afraid of what? Of becoming pregnant. So everybody's been becoming pregnant since Hawa. Peace be upon her. I said, yeah, yeah, but I'm afraid that my child will grow in this environment and he cannot live. And then there are LGBTQ and there are car accidents. I said, subhanAllah, if they had iman and trust and tawakkul in Allah, all of these would not be uh, around them. So <clears throat> these are types of the fears that people have. You can divide fear into another division, which is also part of those who have OCD. People come to me, Sheikh, I have committed shirk. Why? I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of my boss. I'm afraid of the dark. I'm afraid of the jinn. I'm afraid of my wife. <laughs> Aren't we all? So this is happening everywhere. Why? This is natural fear. Some people ask me and ask that. Sheikh, I was praying and a lion came to attack me. Should I continue prayer? So I said, Wallah, if you keep and preserve your wudu, continue. <laughs> if a lion comes, your wudu is, will break, akhi. so run. <laughs> this is natural fear. This has nothing to do with shirk. People do not differentiate between the fear of Allah and the fear of the creatures. Even Musa in the Quran Allah described, described him in two or three places that he feared them. I fear Pharaoh. And he feared when they threw their uh, uh, staffs on the ground and it became snakes. He feared. This is a natural fear. But the fear we're talking about is the fear of Allah. If you fear someone, 
like you fear Allah, while exonerating them, while praising them, if you fear the jinn, if you fear Mawlana, if you feel the dis fear the, the deceased, a dead person, I say to you, swear that you did not steal this by Allah. I said, Wallahi, I did not steal it. Okay, swear by Mawlana that you did not steal it. Mm, no, I'm afraid. Because if I swear by Al-Badawi or Tijani or Shadili or Al-Jilani, he may, you know, strike me with lightning or yesterday it rained. I can't do this. This is fear of shirk. This is the type of, of shirk. So we have to understand what fear is and to see which one or which stage we are in. How did the companions deal with fear of Allah? Of course, the Prophet Alaihi fear, yani, it will take us hours to mention how he spent nights weeping, tears, wetting his beard and wetting the, the floor. Come on, this is the Prophet of Allah, the best of Allah's creation. Someone who has a carte blanche, whatever you did in the past, Whatever you were doing in the future is forgiven. Yet he fears Allah like this. And we, we have nothing. Yet we are so happy and joyful, we never shed a tear. Except when we watch the Titanic maybe, or I don't know. We, way, there are no tears, no fear of Allah. Except over issues of dunya. Oh, I remembered my uncle, I remembered this, I remembered that, and I... But from the fear of Allah, this is a problem. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him. And he is who he is. He used to hold his tongue and says, this is what will take me to bad places. Fearing the, 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 the consequences of what he says. Umar says, by Allah, if a camel or a mule were to trip in Iraq, thousands of miles away from Medina, I would be afraid that Allah would ask me about it. And this is frightening for everyone who has responsibility. Whether you are a king, you're a president, you're a manager, you are, if you have responsibility, Allah would ask you about every single thing under your responsibility. And Umar used to also say, if someone would to call and say, all of you are in Jannah, Except one, I would have feared that I would be that one. Subhanallah, Umar. He fears that everyone will go to Jannah except himself. What kind of fear do we have in our hearts? And if you look at Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him. He was narrating a hadith. And this hadith was in Sahih al Muslim where the Prophet said, the first three to be thrown in hell are one, two, and he reaches this stage, the, the, the first three to be thrown into hell, he weeps and faints. And he wakes up again. And he said, the Prophet said, the first three to be thrown in hell are, he weeps, he could not continue the hadith, and he faints. Is he making it up? Huh? Is he acting? A'udhu Billah. Abu Huraira used to divide the night into three parts. Him and his brother and his mother. One third he prays and they sleep. Then he sleeps, one of them stands and pray. The second third while the other two sleep and the third sleeps, uh, prays the third. This is Abu Huraira. So look at his fear of the three to be thrown into hell. And it does not apply to him, but he feared that it may have applied to him. So what are the things that we would benefit from fear of Allah Azza wa Jal? A number of things, time does not allow us to expand on them, but in a nutshell, number one, fear equals sincerity. When you fear Allah Azza wa Jal, you don't go around people every Monday and Thursday to the office if you're a worker, I used to have people like this coming to my office on Monday and sitting at 10 o'clock in the, in, in the morning. And the guy says, oh, I don't ask. My, my nature is I don't interfere in people's business. Don't interfere in mine, I wouldn't interfere in yours. After 20 minutes, 
15 minutes of sitting without me asking. He says, ah, oh, last night, well, I, I prayed night prayer for yani, some quiet time. I feel tired. Good for you. I don't talk. And then after a while, I said, would you like something to drink? He said, no, I'm fasting. This is what he wanted. Okay, I have to go. And he goes. So some people like to show off. I once sat with an editor in one of the biggest newspapers in, in, in Saudi Arabia who used to put the pictures of females at the end of the page uh, of the newspaper. And this was a taboo, was. So I went to speak to him and give him advice. He happens to know me because of so many reasons, but I went and I said, Akhi, look, this is haram. He said, Sheikh, I know this is haram, but you know how many people accepted Islam on my hands? 37. What is he saying? He's justifying his sin by saying that I have credit. Seven, 37 people accepted Islam on my hands. That's Allah al-Afiyah. Therefore, if he had fear in Allah, he would not know that he, Allah will accept. So he would keep it to himself. Therefore, sincerity and fear go side by side. Sincer and, uh, uh, the fear of Allah pushes you to do more good deeds. So I prayed the five fard. Mm, not enough. Why? I'm afraid I have too many sins. Let me pray 12 rak'ah sunnah. I prayed 12 rak'ah sunnah. Mm, not enough. Did, you, did I pray duha today? Mm, this is very important. I have to pay charity for 360 joints in my body every day. The Prophet said, alayhi wa two rak'ah of duha does this. So if you don't pray duha every day, start doing it. I started doing it 25 years ago. I was a big sheikh then, but I did not pray duha. In my school, I found a teacher who barely had a beard. Every day in his spare class at 11 o'clock, without saying anything, he goes, makes wudu, puts his prayer mat in the teacher's room, prays to rakah and says, one day, two day, one week, two. But then I said to myself, Allahi shame on you. And you're a sheikh and you teach people and you do it. Since then, he's getting credit every time I pray duha. And he did not even open his mouth. And this is the beauty of da'wah. So I'm, I'm telling you now, pray duha. Inshallah, if you pray duha, I'll be in my grave getting, inshallah, credit whenever you pray duha. Beautiful prayer. So it... Fear of Allah pushes you to do good deeds. Fear of Allah makes you hasten to Jannah. The Prophet said, والسلام, whoever is afraid, he travels in the beginning of the night. You know, when they traveled, they did not travel <laughs> in the morning because of the heat of the sun. So they used to travel at night because it's quicker for your travel and at the same time, it's safer. So the Prophet says, Man khafa adlaj. whoever is afraid, travels at the beginning of the night. This is a metaphor. If you're afraid of hellfire, then you will travel at the, end, the beginning of the night, meaning do a lot of good deeds. And whoever travels at the beginning of the night will reach quickly, meaning to Jannah. The merchandise of Allah is expensive. The merchandise is Jannah. And also, one of the benefits of fearing Allah you will be under the shade of Allah. As in the hadith seven, are in the shade of Allah on the day of judgment where there is no shade except his shade. A, one of them is a man seduced by a woman who's beautiful and influential. And he says, I fear Allah. Subhanallah. The vast majority of the youth today says, Sheikh, where is this woman? I'm here, I'm available. Unfortunately, they look for it. No, this man was lured and seduced, but he said and proclaimed, I fear Allah Azza wa Jal. And those who fear Allah Azza wa Jal in this dunya, they will not fear Allah on the day of judgment. And those who are safe from Allah's torment in this dunya, Allah will torment them as per the hadith. By my grace and 
my honor. I shall not combine two fears and two security upon my servant. If he fears me in this dunya, I will give him security on the day of judgment. But if he feels secure in this dunya, I will torment him and made him afraid on the day of judgment. This is fear. What about hope, Sheikh? Give us some hope. And this is why I did not begin with hope. I thought of scaring you a little bit. Now, inshallah, I will give you hope. What is hope in Islam? Ar-raja. Ar-raja is when your heart is connected to Allah Azza wa Jal, feeling happy and optimistic of Allah's favors and blessings coming over you, feeling the peace and tranquility, feeling your heart because you know who Allah is. This is totally the opposite of the fear. Here you are safe. You feel safe. And I always give an example and Allah has the highest of all examples. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, walillahi al al-a'la. When you hold your one-year-old child and you toss him in the air, what does a child do? Put me down, put me down. Does he do this? No, he laughs and he enjoys it. The more you do it, the... if I were to throw you in the air, what would you do? <laughs> you will hang to the chandelier. <laughs> you're crazy. Come down, I'm going to pick you up. I said, man, you're out of your mind. Because you don't trust me. So those who have hope in Allah feel like a child being tossed in the air. They know Allah will catch them. They know Allah will forgive them. They know Allah will give them Jannah. Ya akhi, Allah made the Jannah to whom? To you and me. Allah made the Jannah to whom? To you and me. All what you have to do is think positively of Allah Azza wa Jal. So <clears throat> what is the difference between hope, raja, and being wishful? What tamanni? Ah. Wishful is when you sit on your backside and you don't do anything and you say, I'll open the door for the Prophet of the Jannah from the inside. Meaning I will enter first and open the door for him. This is stupid. This is wishful. While being hopeful is when you pray night prayer for two, three hours and you do good deeds and you read the Quran once every month at least and you give charity. And you are hopeful that Allah will accept. This is al-raja al-mahmood. So how can we attain this level of hopefulness in Allah Azza wa Jal? By looking at Allah's previous favors and blessings upon you. Did Allah send you favors and blessings in the past? Of course, I, I'm standing. I can see. I can speak, I can eat, I can move around. These are all favors from Allah. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةِ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ So this makes me hopeful in Allah's continuous gift and blessing and Allah does not let us down. Allah continues to give us blessings, Wallahi, from means you do not anticipate. Also, you remember when you read the Quran and the Sunnah, what Allah has promised you. Whenever you pass by verses of Jannah and see what's in Jannah, your heart flies and says, I'll be there. I am one of the inhabitants of Jannah. I know that. And you wish and you ask Allah and you make dua. Also, you remember Allah's current favors and blessings upon you. The houses, the children, the wives, the, the wealth that Allah gives to you. And most of what you're being given is without asking. Is everything you have, you asked Allah for? No. All what we ask Allah for is a 2024 20, model new car. Yes. Alhamdulillah, I, I don't want anything. But everything else, Allah gives you without asking. And we never appreciative of that. Among the things that help you in being hopeful is remembering Allah's forgiveness. Subhanallah. Allah's forgiveness is beyond imagination. And this is why the more you study Allah's beautiful names, the more you love Allah and you're hopeful. 
Allah's beautiful name, Al Karim. He's the most generous. Allah's beautiful name, Al Rahim, the most merciful. Allah's beautiful name, Al Ghaffar, Al Ghafoor, the one who forgives. Allah's beautiful name as Al Jawad. He is the one that gives. At Tawab, the one who repents over whomever asks him, Who is this? Allah Azza wa Jal. So if you believe in him, if you have hope in him, you will find him as you believe. As mentioned in the hadith. And listen to this hadith. The Prophet says, alayhi wa sallam, four are gotten out of hellfire for accountability. And then Allah Azza wa Jal orders them back to go to hell. So they came out because Allah wanted to hold them accountable for some of their deeds and then they're sent back to hell. One of them looks and says, Oh Allah, I had hoped that you had gotten me out that you would not put me in back again. This is, was my hope. The hope is where? On the day of judgment. The hope of whom? Of someone was in hell and was exited and will come back again. So he's saying, objecting, Ya Allah, I was hoping that once I'm out of it, you will not put me back. Allah says, then I will fulfill your hope. Don't put him back. Subhanallah. Imagine after getting out of hell just because he had hopes in Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal says, because of your hope, you will not go back. The other hadith, the Prophet says, alayhi salatu was salam, the, uh, and this hadith Qudsi, when a servant makes a sin, and he says, oh Allah, forgive my sin. Allah says, my servant has sinned, and he knows that Allah, he has a Lord that forgives sins, and holds accountable of the sin, then he makes a sin again. And Allah says the same thing. And he makes a sin for the third time. And Allah says the same thing. And when he does it for the first, fourth time, Allah says, let my servant do whatever he wants. I have forgiven him. La ilaha illallah. Does this mean we should go and sin? Of course not. It means that as long as you sin because of your human nature, because of your weakness, and you repent and ask Allah for forgiveness, and you feel remorseful in your heart, Allah will forgive you. Regardless of how big your sin is, regardless how many times you do it, as long as you fulfill the conditions of repentance, Allah will forgive you. So, <clears throat> how much time, Ya Sheikh, do we have? 15 huh? more minutes. 15 more minutes. With the questions and answers? Uh, with question and answer, that makes 30 minutes. Okay, no, I will finish, inshallah, in, in 10 minutes. 10, inshallah. So, what are the benefits of having hope, al raja in Allah? Number one, it's the main reason for finding the sweetness of Iman and, and, and wor forms of worship. Why, when we pray, we're so grumpy and thinking about worldly matters and not being able to find the sweetness of Salat because we don't have hope in Allah. We're spectacle of Allah. We are uh, pessimistic. So we pray and we don't know Allah will accept or not. We just want to get it off our chest, out of our backs. No, when you have great hope in Allah, your ibadah has a sweetness to it. One of the benefits of hope is that you express your ubudiyah, your being a slave of Allah and a servant to Him when you have hope. One of the benefits is that you make dua. If you hope in something, you will not attain it without dua. So you make a lot of dua. And it would help you escape the wrath of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, the one million the Kuwaiti dinar, the one million Kuwaiti dinar question. I wouldn't say ringgit because ringgit is. <laughs> Kuwaiti dinar is about 15, 16 ringgits. I don't know, a lot. So the one million Kuwaiti dinar question. 
How can we balance? It is extremely important to balance between al-khawfu wa raja the fear of Allah and the hope of Allah. Why? To us, ahlu sunnati wal jama'ah, we believe that we are different than the deviant sects, the 72 that are in hell. Because one will be in paradise, as the Prophet said, and those are who follow the footsteps of the Prophet and his companions. So our belief is Iman is increased and decreased. Increases with good deeds, decreases with sins. Al-Khawarij and Al-Murji'ah, they believe Iman to be a bulk. Either goes all of it or stays all of it. Khawarij said, if you do a major sin, the whole Iman is gone. You're a kafir. Oof. So they went to the far extreme of fear. So even if you lie, you're a kafir. You steal, you're a kafir. You make backbiting, you're a kafir. Immediately. The Murji'a, who are the majority of the Muslims nowadays, unfortunately, they say, no matter what you do, you have Iman, you have Taqwa, you can party all night long, you can booze, you can do drugs, you can lie, you can cheat, you deal in riba, take mortgage. Alhamdulillah, you say la ilaha illallah, you're in Jannah. So they say, your Iman can never be decreased. Ahlu Sunnah wa Jama'ah says, no, 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 it's not like this. Fear and hope are like the wings of a bird. They have to be balanced. If one wing is stronger, the bird will be tilted and fall. And if they're all flapping well, the bird will fly in a good way. And this is what is mentioned all over the Quran. The day the, their faces will be white and some faces will turn black. So fear and hope. And Allah says, Inna Rabbaka Sari'ul Iqab wa innahu lagafurul Rahim. Your Lord is prompt and fast in torment and in punishment and penalty as he is Azza wa Jal, most forgiving, most merciful, and so on. So how to balance? Let it be known that every fear of Allah must have hope. And every hope in Allah must have fear. Oh, how is that? If your fear does not have any hope, it will be despair and qunut from rahmatillah, from Allah's mercy. And this will take you to hell. And if your hope is 100% without fear, this means that you will indulge in doing sins because you have huge and great hope in Allah Azza wa Jal, and that would also take you to hell. So when to have hope overwhelming my condition and when to have fear overwhelming my condition, hope and fear, though they have to be balanced, sometimes one must a little bit exceed the other. For example, at the time of death, when you're dying, Khalas, the doctor says, mm, five minutes, seven minutes. What is the best for you to do? Fear Allah or be hopeful? Huh? Whoever says hopeful, raise your hands. Just to make sure you're awake. Okay. <laughs> because I'm saying, after breakfast, everybody's asleep. Who, okay, whoever says the fear of Allah, raise your hands. One, oh, only one child. Okay, two. Three, four, five. Okay. No, the majority is, it's not democracy. Huh? <laughs> this is not voting. Uh, but yes, at the time of death, you have to have the hope exceeding. Because the fear pushes you to do what? Good deeds. In this state of death, you can't do anything. So the only thing you have is this straw that you have to hang on in this ocean. You're dying. So think positive of Allah. And this is why people at the time of death, they used to tell their students, remind me of my good deeds. Oh, Sheikh, you have been living for 70 years. You fasted for 60 years. 
not break one day. I feel good about this, by the way. I just remembered. Yes, I did not, alhamdulillah, skip any day of Ramadan. Wow, that's good. Shaykh, you prayed this much. You made khatma of the Quran this much. This gives you hope in Allah at the time of your bed. Also, and the Prophet said, والسلام, no one of you should die except thinking well of Allah. This is an instruction. When, you, when it's your deathbed, on your deathbed, think well of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, when someone is in despair of Allah's mercy, someone who has OCD, and says, oh, I'm going to hell, I'm going to... Remind him of hope and the beauty of hope in Islam so that you get him out of this OCD and mental illness. And the cases we should make the fear more prevalent, for example, when the people are in security. When you go to their lavish homes and they feel fine, everything is fine, my job is secured, my children are healthy, I have a huge bank account, my business is doing well. This is when shaitan is preparing you, watch out. Shaitan is marinating you like a good chef. Hmm? This is what he's doing, he's waiting for the right moment. So you be fearful of Allah Azza wa Jal and watch out by remembering that I have to fear Allah like the prophets and the messengers. And you should also have fear exceeding and prevailing when you are doing a sin. So you don't listen to music or watch haram movies and say, astaghfirullah, 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 astaghfirullah. Some people do this and they think that, no, you're making fun of Allah Azza wa Jal. Okay, is istighfar haram? No, but in this location, turn off the haram so that you would have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, whenever you feel safe and secure and that you are in Jannah, this is when you have to make fear prevailing. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, and with this I would conclude my talk, inshallah, was asked a question. When does the servant of Allah find the taste of comfort? In this dunya, is there comfort? Yes, at the end of the day when you go to sleep, you crash, khalas, you're comfortable. So a man is asking, when does the servant find the real taste of comfort? Ahmed ibn Hanbal, may Allah have mercy on his soul, said, when he puts his first foot in paradise. Before you put your foot in paradise, You'll never be safe. You'll never be comfortable. It's always agony and torment and trials from Allah. The moment you put your first, first foot in Jannah, خلاص, nobody's going to take you out. You're there to stay. This is when eternal comfort and safety would uh, be achieved. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal that he makes me and you among the inhabitants of Jannah and that Allah puts in our hearts the fear of him and the hope in what he has for us and to make us balanced from Ahl al-Sunnati wal-Jama'ah. Hada wallahu alam wa nisbatu al-ilmi ilayhi aslam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad.